Yo, what's going on guys? Today we are going to be going over 3-shot Fade Flak. Probably one of the most powerful builds and highest damage you can even do in general in this game on any character. Flak is probably one of the best characters in this raid with his high damage, his mobbing potential, his survivability, and the different gameplay loops you can do with him. Now this build is brought to you none other uh, than by Rator. A lot of you know Rator in the community. And for those of you who don't, Rator is actually known as Flak himself. He's made many appearances, uh, winning Moxie's takedown challenge a while back. And he was also the special guest on a video Moxie posted about the Flak masterclass. So if you guys need some credentials for why Rator is the one to bring you this build, there they are. Now, uh, I wanted to post Rator's Flak build because a lot of people are asking me about Flak right now, how to survive with him, how to do insane damage, yada yada yada. So we're gonna get straight into this build. Now, the last thing I have to say is I will be linking a 42 minute true takedown run with Flak with zero skips. And just to give you guys a frame of reference of how insane that is, I posted a 40 minute uh, scaled takedown run with Zayn with skips. So Flak's damage is actually unmatched in this game. And with that being said, let's hop straight into the game so I can break down this build for you guys. Now, real quick, like I said, uh, this build is brought to you none other by Rator. When it... Well, uh, when we go over the skill trees and the gear, basically we are optimizing for a three-shot fadeaway flak action skill end uh, build. Now, a lot of people don't realize, but flak has these two augments right here, which are literally action skill end augments. Um, and these two augments are very, very powerful, and I recommend running these uh, over Gorillas in the Mist. Now, a lot of people like to play Gorillas in the Mist, but in my opinion, this is really a bossing augment with weapons like the Monarch or, you know, the Dictator, but now it's just the Monarch. Um, so this build is really going to focus on action skill end. Now, another common misconception is that uh, using 3-shot with weapons like the Monarch and weapons like the Reflux... Uh, we won't be in fadeaway that long. The thing is, with this build, you get to control your fadeaway. So when we activate fadeaway, um, now I am in fadeaway for until I want to leave, you know what I mean? Gorillas in the Mist really limits you to that five seconds. So when I want to leave fadeaway, I just shoot. And that is really the secret behind this build and the secret behind Flex survivability. You are using fadeaway to trigger action skill and augments, um, which will literally give you the most damage you can get. Um, meanwhile, when you need that survivability and you need to escape, then just stop shooting, hop into fade, use your pet command, run away. So with that all being said and kind of breaking down the reason why we went with these skill augments, even though we are running the Monarch in this build and in the true takedown footage that Rator posted, he is running fully automatic weapons and that's why that these are actually better than Gorillas in the Mist. Now with that being said, let's go over these skill trees and just tell you a little bit about the gear. Uh, so basically we have 5 points into Furious Attack, 5 points into Overclocked, 3 points into All My BFFs, a point into Lick the Wounds, 3 points into Turn Tail and Run, 3 points into Fast and the Furious, uh, 5 points into Hit a Machine, and then we get to the Power Inside. Now one main thing that we are using that uh, has actually previously been advised against... Uh, one second. Let me actually turn off the controller overlay. Sorry about that. Um, is Hidden Machine. Now, the reason why Rator choose to use this, I believe, is because of the mechanics of the raid. The Guardians really, really focus on your pet, and you can actually use Fade Away in conjunction with Not My Circus and Pet Commands, and we can get this bonus active a little bit more, um, often than usual. So, that is why he chose to go with this for this build. Um, now moving on, uh, quickly in the blue tree, we just got to show the three points in Persistence Hunter. This gives you even more time and more control in Fade Away, so uh, this just kind of emphasizes the points I was making earlier. Finally, of course, we have Red Tree. Now, all of you know how Red Tree goes. We get Leave No Trace, we get Head Count. Leave No Trace is super important. Um, there are actually people leaving this out of builds uh, somehow, but it is insanely powerful with the next two Magazine Anointment and with the reflux and yeah uh don't skimp on these crit skills this is why flax red tree is so powerful uh next we have a pretty straightforward uh red tree setup otherwise 
Interplanetary Stalker, Hunter's Eye. Uh, we stuck two points into Second Intention, which is a very powerful reload skill. Uh, three into the most dangerous game, three into big game, one into Galactic Shadow, and of course one into Megavore. Now, the red tree is pretty straightforward. Everybody plays this tree because, you know, Megavore. And yeah, so that is the skill tree. And uh, if you guys have any questions about why, you know, uh, this sort of three-shot meta, even though we are using fully automatic weapons, um, really we are abusing action skill end, and that is what's so important. Not my circus, and until you are dead, are action skill and augments. So uh, looping fade and cycling these action skill end augments is where the power really is with your survivability and with your damage. Now, going over the guns, realistically, you can use any guns in this build. The thing about Mayhem 2.0 is only the most powerful guns are viable. Um, if you guys look way back into some of the Gunboy Flak builds by Daquan and Retor, um, they always used to use the Brainstormer, while the Reflux is just a more powerful version of the Brainstormer. So, realistically, you are just upgrading your weapons with the meta, if that makes sense. Um, and I really have to emphasize how powerful the Reflux and the Brainstormer is. This is one of Fleck's best mobbing weapons. Uh, maybe the Plague Bearer can compete with this. Or, you know, it used to be the Scourge, but now it's the Plague Bearer. Um, like, that's probably the only weapon that can compete with this. The chains you get with Megavore is insane. Um, and I really recommend running the next two Magazine Anointment. With the recent buff of this Anointment... You get insane damage. Like I said, 42 minute true takedown, no skips, um, and stuff like that absolutely blows me away. Besides that, um, uh, Rator really recommends that you run the Bounty Hunter. The 3% chance to activate hunt skills even while mobbing, and then the extra bonuses you get for bossing make this one of the best class mods for this build. Um, and yeah. Besides that, you really want to run the Pearl of Ineffable Knowledge. This significantly increases your DPS on Flak. Um, I was actually testing last night with some other uh, setups. Uh, you can see I have a Frozen Heart on, which I will talk about in a second. But I even tested with an Icebreaker. Um, and the Pearl just gives way higher DPS. So you should be running this on your Flak builds. Just look for the best bonuses you can. Luckily, uh, there's not much variety when it comes to the Pearl. So you really can't mess up no matter which one you have. Besides that, you really just want to run action, skill, and uh, anointments. Since we are using fully auto weapons, we don't really need to use the Hunter Seeker. The Recurring Hex Grenade is really nice for stacking up your Pearl uh, before you're shooting. Um, if you guys didn't know, but the Pearl and the Consecutive Hits Anointment stack with any damage you deal. So that's why I have on the Recurring Hex. Um, and then finally, the last thing I want to mention, this is my little own twist on the build, is the Frozen Heart with Action Skill uh, Start Anointment, the Ass Frozen Heart. Uh, this is just really fun to play with. This adds to your survivability. This build has more than enough damage if um, to be able to use this shield. It's just a really fun option, and I like playing with it, and I don't find any trouble, you know, this just makes me really comfortable, and it kind of reminds me of playing with Zane because I am used to scoring crits and freezing enemies anyway. Now, to optimize for damage, um, you really need to put on the Old God Shield. For bossing, you really want to switch to the Old Gods. Of course, I have one in Corrosive, in Shock, and in Fire. Just farm for, you know, the action skill and anointments to match the element on your Old God, and you're going to be good to go. Now, like I said, these are the highest damaging shields. Um, in Rator's true takedown run, he uses the old god. I'm a bit of a memer, and, you know, I like freezing enemies. It's kind of cool. This is a comfy play style with the Frozen Heart. Um, and yeah, now one other thing I want to mention about the Frozen Heart is my class mod. I am using Splash Damage Radius to really take advantage of this Frozen Heart. You really, really, really want Splash Damage Radius on your class mod. Since we're using the Pearl, we can't get Splash Damage Radius on the Artifact. And um, this significantly increases the radius of the Frozen Heart, but that's why I'm using it. Um, otherwise, I really recommend looking out for crit rolls. Hyperion crit roll, when paired with the Reflux, is absolutely bonkers, and yeah. So anyways, guys, that is pretty much it for the video. I will actually be streaming this build uh, today, and otherwise, I will be linking Rator's true takedown run, just so you guys can see the insane things that Flat can do. Um, with that being said, like I said, that is pretty much it for this video. If you guys enjoyed this video, don't forget to drop a like on it and subscribe to the channel if you want to see more Borderlands 3 videos. 
Otherwise, guys, that is pretty much it for me. I am going to go run the Guardian takedown because it is super fun on Flack. And I will be streaming later on twitch.tv slash thickfillet underscore. And yeah, guys, so see you in the next one. I'm out.